Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the Future Programmer YouTube channel. In today's video, we will continue to explore object-oriented programming in Python. In the last video, we talked about what classes and objects are and the fundamental principles behind object-oriented programming. In today's video, we will explore another very important concept in the OOP, which is inheritance. So let's get started. Inheritance is one of object-oriented programming's most useful capabilities, and it's also a very interesting concept. So let's take a look at what it is. Let's think about a scenario where we want to write two classes, a student and a teacher class. And their objects are going to represent, well, a student and a teacher. Without inheritance, here's an example of how that can be implemented. We can have a class student, which has an init method that will build the object using its name, age, and GPA. And those are going to be stored inside instance variables, instance attributes called name, age, and GPA. The introduce method is going to print out the name and age information, and then the GPA information of the student. For the class teacher, the teacher class, we're going to have an init method take the parameters name, age, and subject. And those are going to be stored inside the name, age, and subject instance attribute. And then we're going to also have an introduce method, which prints out the name and age information, and then the subject, which the teacher teaches. Lastly, we made a student object with the name as Bob, age 15, GPA 4.2. We also made a teacher object named Mrs. Smith, age 34, and subject programming. If we call the introduce method on those two objects, you'll see I'm Bob, I'm 15, my GPA is 4.2, I'm Miss Smith, and I'm 34, I teach programming. So everything worked just as we wanted. However, the code above is so repetitive. When you look at the code, you'll see the class definition, well, it has to be there, and we're gonna have an init method. This line is the exact same as this line, besides the fact that we have subject here and GPA here. Those two lines are the exact same as those two lines. And for the introduce method, those two lines are the identical copy of those two lines. So we aren't having a lot of differences between those two classes, and we're repeating a lot in, those, in the definition of those two classes. And inheritance allows us, to, uh, allows us to make our code much simpler. Like the name suggests, inheritance allows us to define a class to inherit the properties and methods of another class. A parent class is known as it's also known as a superclass is the class which is being inherited from. And the child class is the class that is inheriting from the parent class, known as the subclass. To improve the definition of the student and teacher classes, we can make a common, a common parent class known as person that both subclasses inherit from. When you think about it, a student is a person and so is a teacher. So therefore a student is going to have all the functionalities of a person and more. And the same can be said about the teacher. Here's a definition of the person class. We're going to have class person, and we're going to have everything that all its subclasses has. So it's not going to have GPA or subject. It's going to have only name and age, name and age right here. That's going to be shared by all the subclasses of the person class. And for the introduce method, we're going to print out the name and age information because that is going to be shared by all these subclasses. So let me run this code and the person class has now been defined. So if we want to define a student class which inherits from the person superclass, we can put the name of the class or the name of the parent class in parentheses after the subclass. So let's take a look at this definition for the student class. We have class and then student. And notice here how we had a, we have a pair of parentheses inside of which we write person. In the last video, we didn't have any pair of parentheses after the name of the class. And this is where inheritance happens. Just by writing a pair of parentheses and putting the name of the superclass in it, the student class now shares everything that the person class had. So let me run this cell. Now student class is now successfully defined. And the reason why I put class here is because right now I don't want to have the student 
add any additional functionality that the person class doesn't have. And we have to put pass here, so it's not going to raise a syntax error. So right now, a student class will be the same as a person class due to inheritance. Let's test that. We make a person object, name is person1, age is 50, and we make a student object, student1 is the name and 22 is the age. If we call the introduce methods on uh, introduce method on those objects, you'll see I'm person1, I'm 50, and I'm student1, and I'm 22 printed out. The student object now has the name and age attributes as well as the introduce method of the parent class, which is person, even though we did not explicitly define anything in the class definition, when we have pass in the desk in the class definition for student. And the reason for that is all the properties and methods of a parent class are inherited by a child class. So if we want to have the student object have additional features that a person doesn't have, let's take a look at this cell. We have again class student, which inherits from person. And here we have an overriding method called init. So the subclass is going to override the method, the init method of the parent class person. So here we have dev init. We're going to take three parameters, name, age, and GPA. And with name and age, we're going to pass it into super.init. What super is, this is going to return to us person. So essentially, with this line, we're calling the init method of the parent class person when we pass in the name information passed through the constructor and the age information as well. And since the parent class person doesn't have anything to do with the GPA, we have to explicitly define that in the init method of the student class. And then we have an introduce method, which also overrides that of the parent class. And in here, we first call the introduce method of the parent class through super.introduce. And then after that, we want to print out my GPA is whatever the GPA is. So if I run this cell where we have a student object and the introduce method called on it, we're going to see I am some student and I am five. My GPA is 2.7. So when we pass in some student into student, this information is taken as name. And name is going to be passed into the init method of the superclass right here. So let's take a look at the superclass definition of the init method. So name and then age. So it's going to assign an instance property called name as whatever is passed in as the first parameter of the method call. And then we're going to have age stored inside an instance attribute as well. So let's take a look at 2.7. 2.7 is going to be passed into the init method as GPA. And GPA is going to be manually assigned to the instance attribute GPA for the student. And when we call it the introduce method, well, it's going to first call the introduce method of the parent class. And that's going to give us the output of I am whatever my name is and I am whatever the age is for that person. And then we have print my GPA is whatever the GPA is. So it's going to print out my GPA is 2.7. Now our, our students are able to introduce themselves by GPA. Let's do the same for the teachers, well, with subjects. So teacher now inherits from a person. We have an overriding init method that takes three parameters, name, age, and subject. Name and age are passed to the init method of the parent class. And the subject is manually assigned to the subject instance attribute of the teacher class. And the introduce method is going to first call the introduce method of the parent class person, and then we're going to print out we're going to print out the subject which the teacher teaches. So here we make an object for teacher called some teacher name or age is 29, subject is computer science. Let's print out the introduce method output which is going to be, I am some teacher, I'm 29, I teach computer science. So cool, now we're able to have classes that inherit the properties and methods from parent classes. This allows us to model many real relationships in the real world. When you think about it, we can have a parent class called, for example, vehicle. And we can have vehicle being inherited by subclasses like boat, car, ship, 
plane, etc. And note how a superclass can be inherited by any number of subclasses. So we can write as many subclasses as we want for one superclass. And we can, we can also have multiple layers of inheritance. So if we have a parent class called device, that can be inherited by a class called computer, which is in turn inherited by a class called, say, laptop, and then another called PC. Inheritance really allows us to do many things that we couldn't do before without it. And just a note is that when you think about, when you look at the code for this video, the teacher class definition with inheritance is eight lines of code. And if you look at the definition of it without inheritance, we're going to see it was eight lines or nine lines as well. And if you add in the definition for the person class, it's actually seven lines longer. And you may think about it as, you know, it's so unnecessary. It's kind of redundant and it's kind of just unnecessary. And that is normal when you think about it, because normally when we use inheritance, we would be inheriting the parent classes from libraries and modules and packages that other people has written before. And they may have hundreds of lines or even thousands of lines in them. And by using inheritance, our classes can inherit all of those functionalities from the super classes in just by putting a parentheses after the definition of the class. So that is where we usually use inheritance. In this video, I just showed you a more simple example with shorter code. And just to summarize, inheritance is something that you will use over and over again as you continue programming in object-oriented programming. And hopefully, today's lesson has given you a good idea and how it works and as well as where you can use it. And that's it for this video on inheritance in Python. As always, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more programming tutorials like this one. With that said, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later.